about. So Gil is a Navy veteran, a multifaceted poet, a playwright, musician, DJ, performing artist. He's a two-time Grand Slam poetry champion, champion, two-time Raw Performing Artist of the Year, and three-time TEDx San Diego presenter. Um, Gil is a teaching artist and commissioned playwright with the Old Globe. He also works with Intrepid Theater. He's been commissioned to produce original pieces for the San Diego Symphony, the United Way, um, Feeding America, which is a, Feeding San Diego is a division of that one, Fringe Fest, San Diego Opera. And he officially now, whether he likes it or not, opens every San Diego Writers Festival. So, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. No, it's official. <laughs> it's no, live. It's official. Hi, Gil. Hi, Gil. Hey, how are you all? We're so good. We're, we're delighted to have you, and I'm going to turn excited. it over to you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. Away. Man, uh, it's such a pleasure to be here. Uh, uh, excuse me if I'm feeling a little frantic right now. Um, uh, right before this happened, I got a whole bunch of technical issues that was happening with my computer setup, but we're going to make it work. And um, it, it, it ties in nicely to the first poem I'm going to do, uh, which is one of my favorites. It's called Ordinary Magic. Because uh, what Jennifer and Marnie and the rest of the team here at the San Diego Writers Festival has been able to put together in this time is, is nothing short of magical. The fact that I'm able to uh, do this poetry uh, for you here, despite being in a hot garage, despite my kids coming in, trying to come in and be with their daddy, uh, is nothing short of magical. So this is called Ordinary Magic. It must be magic because no one could tell me how love really works, how it is able to die daily online and reincarnate in the belly of a laugh, an unexpected embrace, an anticipated first kiss. Now tell me, there isn't magic in this. It must be magic because my parents met when they were 11, divorced when I was 11, and got remarried again when I was 34. I am now 11 anew, still rocking Transformer t-shirts, slightly larger of course, <laughs> but still excited to see my parents hold hands once more. Speaking of children and magic, magic and children, my son Jackson, he is four years old. He wears Batman and swells his chest. He protects his mama like his daddy did when I was his age. I too was the dark knight who didn't require the, the night to be considered dark. I called myself the chocolate adventure. Da -da -da -da. My, my father, he took it one step further. Uh, he used to dance around his house in a sister's ballerina outfit and a, a towel wrapped around his neck, also playing the role of the Cape Crusader. That's three different generations of superhero, all fighting the good fight, all wanting to be the good guy. Now we use our words to battle injustice. I am a socially conscious playwright and poet. My father, he's a high school guidance counselor for, for special needs. Um, uh, my son, he's the best of us all. Uh, he actually shrieks when he laughs and when he does, pain suddenly dematerializes from our home. I imagine a big cartoon pow or bam above his head like Batman when this happens. Now tell me, there isn't magic in this. Now why is this important, SD Writers Fest? Because you could look around what's going on in the world. Ordinary magic is disappearing at an alarming rate. Now, I know there's some smart nerds out there who don't care much for this poetry stuff. So for you, I have a John Hopkins statistic. Lisa Yannick, MPH, has found that positive people are 13% less likely to have a heart attack or other coronary event. Dr. Edward E. Jones from the University of Michigan has found that people whose explanatory style is pessimistic, they exercise less and smoke and drink more than do optimists. Dr. Uh, Peterson from the University of Princeton or Princeton University has found that how we view the world not only shapes our, our living in it, but it actually determines reality itself. And the most telling of them all, the most telling statistic that I found of them all is that Maxim Magazine, you know, Maxim Magazine has found that if you're positive, you just have more sex. So there you have it. <laughs> Ordinary magic. I see it everywhere. Hiding in plain sight. Loving for no good reason. A, a black man with no fancy education getting to speak to you good people here at the San Diego Writers Fest. Armed with only a disturbingly, disturbingly, disturbingly handsome face and a pocket full of passion. Uh, imagine 10 years ago, I can barely afford ramen. And now for a living, I write pretty words and marry to even prettier frugal woman and people no longer laugh at my credit scores. Uh, 
we have to change the definition of what we call the miraculous. Now, Disney will have you believing that it happens instantaneous, but true source you doesn't begin with just the snap of the fingers or by evoking some incantations. No, true magic begins the moment that you recognize that somewhere in your life, Somewhere in your life, you have been through your own personal hell. And somehow, you've made it on this Facebook Live or Zoom call. You survived. Through all of that, you survived. And if need be, you could do it again. Now tell me, there isn't magic in that. Mm. Thank you. All right. So uh, I have one more piece for you. This is something that I just wrote. Uh, because, you know, with all that's going on right now, uh, uh, people are really struggling to find their voice. I don't know, with writers, they, that's the, one of the first things that they, they try, they tell us, teach us to, 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 to develop your own voice so you don't sound like everybody else. And it's important that you don't sound like everybody else. It's important to have unity, but you have a you, unique point of view, you have a unique perspective that we need to hear and we need to hear all of your voices. So I hope you continue to keep writing and, and keep striving and, and, and keep making this world a little bit better. So this is the second poem and my last poem. It's been a pleasure to be here with you. Finding your voice is like finding yourself, except often you don't even realize that your voice has been lost until Someone stomps on the tender part of your spirit until some conglomerate challenges the courage inside of you and you have no choice but to stand up and call out bullshit. It is at that moment that you recognize and realize that change is no longer an option. It is a necessity. Your voice, yes, you, your voice is necessary. It is not narcissistic to have an opinion. However, we, the people of the United States of calm your ass down, do humbly ask that before you speak, you listen. Listen to the steadfast single mother and to the war-tested grandfather. Listen to what family means to the farm worker and what community means to the grassroots organizer. Hell, listen to what the elephants are saying about global warming and what the spider monkeys have to say about the deforestation of the Amazon. Those two things are still going on, by the way. Listen to what the black child has to say about his definition of black skin what it feels like upon his body as he grows into becoming a teenager, what it tastes like when, he ha when she has to weigh her future options upon graduating from high school, what it sounds like when we hear the two sharp sirens blast from a police car behind us, what it tastes like when we finally get into the workforce and some conglomerate challenges the courage inside of us and we have no choice but to stand up and finally call out, no, that's bullshit. Listen to the CEO. Yeah, I said it. Listen to the CEO and to the correctional officer and to the, the general store county clerk and to the court appointed lawyer and to the, to the church pastor. The thing is that everyone believes that they are the hero of their own story. And until we start to listen, you may or may not realize that subconsciously you could have been raised to be the villain. Here's the test. Ask yourself, is my voice in harmony of what I believe my idea of love is? Ask yourself, does what I am spitting rhyme with what God would want for his people? Ask yourself, have I listened to enough voices to know that the verse that I am singing is in the right key to push humanity forward so that all feel valued? If the answers to the question is yes, then congratulations, you have found your voice. Know that it will be challenged, and that's okay. Know that you may change it from time to time, and that's okay too. But that is your voice. Cherish it, and don't let anyone ever take it away again. Find your voice, guys. Enjoy yourselves. I hope you have a great, great, great festival. Thank you so much. Oh, Gil, that was amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gil. I mean, wow, <laughs> that was incredible. 
especially about your words and your endless inspiration. Marnie, go ahead. I just got a little teary. So I think Mm -hmm. it's going to be a long day with me and the tears. Um, (laughs) Totally. (laughs) About, you know, your voice is going to be challenged and yeah. yeah. Keep it, you know, keep it going. And um, I have goosebumps. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like, you know, uh, you definitely have to keep your voice uh, out there, but you know, you have to do your self check. You know, people are going to try to check you, but it's all about your self check. And, and is, is it in line with love? If it's in line with your idea of what love is, then, then uh, keep, and I may even argue with you, you know, uh, there's things that I argue with, with my wife <laughs> and, and we're on the same team. So you can't expect someone like on the internet to completely agree with you all the time. But uh, like everyday magic. Or, yeah, I've, I've been calling it everyday magic. And so when you said ordinary magic, I was just like, a little yeah. because yeah. the thing that I've been like, that's feeding me, like, I've been noticing it that, okay, that can carry me through that day. Mm-hmm. Thank you for saying, I mean, that's what poets do. They say what you can't say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I appreciate Absolutely. it. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, folks, you can support Gil Soto And you can watch more of his amazing spoken word performances on Instagram and on Facebook. You can find him at Gil Sodu. We are a community, my friends. Please follow Gil, reach out and say thank you if his words touched you today. I know they touched me. Gil, Mm -hmm. thank you again. Thank you for coming and being with us. And he's going to be back too in in two weeks. Two weeks. You get to see him again. New poems. July 11th. Awesome. Thank Thank you guys.